podcast dedicated to sharing the truth about what the Bible really says. I'm your host LJ, and the title of this episode is, Does the Bible Say Jesus Was Black? Most people are aware of the traditional portrayal of the image of Jesus, the long-haired white man most commonly used by the vast majority of the Christian world today. It doesn't take too much investigation or common sense to come to the realisation that this image is not, and in no way can be, what the actual Jesus, who walked the earth 2,000 years ago, actually looked like. There is, however, a movement that claims that Jesus was not only not white, but in fact Jesus was black. Many parts of this movement also claim that Abraham, Isaac and Jacob were also black, as are the true Israelites. This podcast is not intended to prove that Jesus or anyone else was any specific colour. It is solely intended to answer the biblical verses used by those who claimed that Jesus was black and that the Bible depicts him as such. Here, I will only be answering the biblical evidence for the physical appearance of Jesus and nothing more. There are, in fact, only two real passages of the Bible that are offered as evidence that Jesus himself was black based on the description of Jesus in the Bible. The first and most often used passage is in the book of Revelation. Revelation 1.14 His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. And he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. So it is claimed that Jesus had hair like wool, which is used to demonstrate the tight curly afro hair of black people, and also that his colour was that of brass, with this meaning that Jesus was a dark brown colour. So let's see if this claim stands up to scrutiny. The first thing that we need to understand is this isn't actually Jesus that is being described although it does resemble the image of Jesus. The simple fact is that when John turns to see who was talking to him in Revelation, he actually sees one like unto the Son of Man, not the Son of Man himself. We are told this in the two previous verses. Revelation 1.12 And I turned to see the voice that spake with me, and being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks, and in the midst of the seven candlesticks one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt, and about the paps, with a golden girdle. John actually saw an angel. This was the angel that Jesus had sent unto John. This is made very clear at the beginning of the book of Revelation. Revelation 1.1 The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him, to shew unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass, and he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. God was the one that gave the revelation of Jesus to Jesus. Jesus gave it to his angel, and the angel went and gave it to John. So when John is spoken to and turns to see who it is, it is the angel that he sees. Now the angel looked like the Son of Man, so the description of what the angel looked like was the representation of what the Son of Man looked like, but it wasn't actually Jesus. What is more important to notice is that this description of Jesus in Revelation is referencing a resurrected, glorified Christ after he had ascended to heaven. This is Jesus in his glorified body. There is no reference whatsoever to the body of Jesus that walked the earth as a Jewish man before his death, burial and resurrection. To try and link the reference in Revelation to the physical man, Jesus, is a complete and utter distortion of scripture and is either due to the lack of study or through purposeful deception. But let's continue and analyse the description itself. Let's start with the claim that Jesus had Afro-style hair. Revelation 1.14 His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. The verse states his hair was white like wool, not that his hair was like wool. The comparison is regarding the colour, not the texture. To further illustrate the whiteness rather than the texture, we then have a second comparison with snow. 
both are referring to the colour, not what it looked like. This understanding regarding colour is also supported in the Bible in the book of Isaiah, where Isaiah says that the sins of the people, although as red as crimson, shall be as white as snow, as wool. Isaiah 1.18 Come now, and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Now there are those that will argue that the meaning of the word wool here is shaggy. Wool can be described as shaggy, but that isn't what is in reference in this verse. Wool has a texture, but it also has a colour. And it is the colour of wool, not its texture, that is being compared to in this verse. There absolutely is no comparison here between the texture of the sins of the people. White as snow and like wool are linked together in reference to colour. It must also be noted that it doesn't just make reference to his hair, but his head also. Not only is his hair white, but also his head. I have yet to see a black man with a white head. Unless, of course, the verse is trying to say that the glorified Christ suffered from vitiligo. I rather think not. Unlike what is often used as a counterclaim, that the hairs on his head were white, this is simply adding to the text and forcing into the verse an interpretation. The text is very clear that both his head and his hairs were white. There is nothing in this verse that denotes a reference to the texture of his hairs on his head. The Greek word translated as white is lukas, which means white, a brilliant whiteness, light, or even bright. This will become relevant later on in the study, when we see the countenance of Jesus being referred to. Furthermore, why is it only the first part of this verse that is being used as evidence? If the first part of the verse is used to prove that the way that Jesus physically looked, then why wouldn't the second part also be used? His eyes were as a flame of fire. How many black men have eyes as a flame of fire? I'm yet to meet any man, regardless of colour, that possesses this physical attribute. Although it could be argued this could be referencing a red eye colour possessed by those who are albino. But this would be an assumption rather than a fact. And it would also now have to be argued that the whiteness was based on Jesus being an albino, which would also negate the argument that the reference to the hair was referring to the texture and not the colour. Some even claim that Jesus had red eyes through excessive wine consumption. I'm not sure that this even warrants a dignified response. However, I will simply refer back to this being the glorified Christ as a rebuttal. Also, most advocates of a black Jesus do not use the second part of the verse in their argument. Then we have verse 15, Revelation 1 15. And his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. It is this verse that is used to demonstrate the dark skin colour of Jesus, the claim being made that Jesus had the feet the colour of brass that had been burned in a furnace. Therefore, Jesus had dark, burnt, coloured skin. So, once again, let us analyse what this verse actually says against the claim. The verse starts by saying, And his feet like unto fine brass. Notice the word fine before the word brass. The colour was like fine brass, not burnt brass. Fine brass, polished, is not brown or black, but a golden or yellow colour. The Greek word translated fine brass is chalchalibanon, and it means a fine metal or frankincense of a yellow colour and has an implied meaning of brilliance or whiteness. It is likely that this is actually a mix of a Greek word kalkos, which is brass, and the Hebrew laban, which means white. It is only used twice in the Bible. The other time is in Revelation 2.18 which we will come to in just a moment. This verse then states, as if they burned in a furnace. This is present tense. Past tense would be as if they had been burned in a furnace. So the color is being linked to being burned in a furnace, not having already been burned in the furnace. The Greek word here, 
is the perfect participle form of the word puru. It literally means made to glow, to be on fire. It comes from the root word pur, which means fire. This is something that is on fire. It is something that is being burned. Anyone that has seen metal being burned in a furnace will know that it causes a very bright white yellow light. So bright, in fact, that those working with the metal in the furnace wear special eye protection goggles. We must also take the second part of this verse and apply this as well, and his voice as the sound of many waters. Can this really be stated of a black man? Or any man for that matter? Again, the claim just doesn't hold up under scrutiny. The scripture is simply being twisted, or misrepresented, in order to make it appear to be saying something that it actually isn't. Both the eyes like fire and his feet like fine brass are stated again in Revelation 2.18. Revelation 2.18 And unto the angel of the church in Theuatera write, These things saith the Son of God, who hath his eyes like unto a flame of fire, and his feet are like fine brass. Now, the word for fine brass is the same word as in Revelation 1.15. No mention of being burned in this verse, or having been burned just simply like fine brass. There is no argument in this verse that it can mean anything other than a yellowish colour. The description of Jesus continues on in Revelation chapter 1 verse 16, although this is not quoted by those who use verses 14 and 15. But as verse 16 is a continuation of the description, we must look also at this and see what it says and be consistent and apply this in the same way that we would with verses 14 and 15. Revelation 1.16 And he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. Here, Jesus is being depicted with a two-edged sword coming out of his mouth. I am yet to find anyone that can give a convincing argument as to why this would be referring to a black man. I don't think I need to offer any other statement than this, but if we are going to take part of the description as literal, we must take all the description as literal, as we have no indication that any is meant to be taken non-literally while other parts are taken literal. To state that some are literal and others are not is to make personal assumptions that are not indicated in the text itself. Then we have and his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. Countenance being the Greek word opsis, meaning the features, outward appearance, his face, his look was like the sun, in its strength, meaning in its brightness. The outward appearance of Jesus was like the sun in its brightness. We see this kind of reference when Jesus appeared to Saul, who became Paul, on the road to Damascus. We are told about Jesus appearing before Saul in Acts 9, Acts 9, 1, and Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest, and desired of him letters to Damascus, to the synagogues, that if he found any of it this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. Saul then saw a light from heaven, Acts 9, 3. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. And he fell to the earth, and I heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. When Saul, or Paul, recounts the event, we are told that the light was above the brightness of the sun. Acts 26.13 At midday, O king, I saw in the way a light from heaven, above the brightness of the sun, shining round about me. The word above, in the above the brightness of the sun, is the Greek word hyper, meaning above, beyond, greater than. The brightness of Jesus being beyond the brightness of the sun. Jesus calls himself the light of the world, John 8, 12. Then spake Jesus again, 
unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in the darkness, but shall have the light of life. When we go back to Acts 9, we see that Saul, or Paul, was actually blinded by this light for three days. Acts 9.9 9. And he was three days without sight, and neither did eat nor drink. In the New Jerusalem, there is no need for the sun, as the Lamb, Jesus, is the light thereof. Revelation 21.23 And the city had no need for the sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it. For the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. And the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it, and the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honour into it. Jesus is the brightness of the glory of God. Hebrews 1.3 Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. At the transfiguration of Jesus, Peter, James and John saw a vision of Jesus in his glorified body. Matthew 17, 1. And after six days, Jesus taketh Peter, James and John, his brother, and bringing them up into a high mountain apart, and was transfigured before them. And his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as the light. Again, we are told that the face of Jesus did shine as the sun. The prophet Daniel saw the glorified Jesus during a vision that he was given. He described the appearance of what he saw. Daniel 10.6 His body also was like the beryl, and his face as the appearance of lightning, and his eyes as lamps of fire, and his arms and his feet like in colour to polished brass, and the voice of his words like the voice of multitude. Again we see that his feet and this time his arms also, were as polished brass, not burned brass. The Hebrew word translated as polished is kawalau, which means burnished, which literally means to be polished. This again would mean a golden yellow colour, not a dark brown one. This word is also used in Ezekiel 1.7, during a vision of the cherubim, their feet described as sparkled, like the colour of burnished brass, not burned brass. Burned brass does not sparkle. Ezekiel 1 7. And their feet were straight feet, and the sole of their feet was like the sole of a calf's foot, and they sparkled like the colour of burnished brass. We must also again be consistent. If we are going to use one part of the description in this verse, we must also use all the description in this verse. The body is likened to beryl. The Hebrew word translated beryl is tarshish, which means a yellow or golden precious stone, most likely to be a yellow jasper. The face as the appearance of lightning and his eyes as lamp of fire, none of which has any likeness to a black man. However, it would support the whiteness and brightness of the head of Jesus in Revelation 1.14 and the countenance of Jesus. Lastly, I would like to deal with Daniel 7 and 9, where Daniel describes the hair of Jesus. Daniel 7 9. I behold, till the thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit, whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head like the pure wool. His throne was like the fiery flame, and his wheels as burning fire. Here it is asserted that Daniel is saying that Jesus had woolly hair. However, when we look at the verse closely, this is not what is being stated at all. The hair of his head like the pure wool. The hair is being described as like the pure wool. Pure is the Hebrew word neke, which means clean or pure, which is from the root naka which just means innocent, pure, clean, or free from. The comparison, again, has nothing at all to do with the texture of the hair of Jesus. Rather, this is the purity of Jesus. The whole description of Jesus, which again, we must remember, is the glorified Jesus, 
is the brightness, the whiteness, the innocence and purity of the glorified Jesus. This simply is not to show or describe a physical man that walked the earth. The use of these verses to show that Jesus was a black man work only if you take the representation of the verses by those making the claim, without any investigation into what these verses are actually saying. Ignore parts of what the verses say and misrepresent them in a way that allows you to represent them in a way to support the claim. This is either through ignorance or dishonesty. Either way, the claim the Bible describes Jesus as being black is incorrect. Thank you very much for listening to the Following Truth podcast. I hope the information has been useful and I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Please remember to subscribe and give this podcast the thumbs up.